Hi, good afternoon. It's so wonderful to be in a space with so many big brains over the last couple days, and you guys also have passion and you have courage um, because you guys are the pioneers. And so you essentially are my favorite type of people. Uh, today, um, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to share my secrets on how to generate content ideas for augmented reality, virtual reality, and mixed reality 2.0. And this is going to be a good uh, dovetail talk to um, Kyle. So I'm also going to talk about how we can take all this inspiration that we've gotten in the last couple of days and apply it in practical ways to our lives so that we can have a mindset for success with our businesses, with our lives, and also with this mission to make the world better. So, I am an artist. I've been working in AR street art since 2012. I'm also a consultant and a futurist. And I believe that um, Ori asked me to speak today because I did a TEDx talk where I used my artwork to show you guys where you are in time. We've lived in generations that have been essentially the same for many thousands of years, and suddenly we're living a life that no one's ever lived before. I talk about how, you know, we can read a book about hitting a baseball, but when we actually hit a baseball, we gain knowledge, and that's what this technology is going to let us do. We're going to move into the knowledge age, and I also believe we're going to move into the wisdom age. And I know you're saying, that's totally crazy. But when you think about who is wise, it's people that have that perspective, that zoomed out perspective. And big data is letting us see all that in a different way and draw different conclusions. When you think about people that are wise, they're people that have traveled all over the world. And we're, again, we're going to be able to do that. And you think about people as being altruistic. Well, you cannot hire a millennial that will work at your company if all you're doing is making money. We want that bigger picture. We want that bigger story. So what can we do in this new medium? We can have out-of-body experiences. We can change the color of our skin to purple. We're certainly not going to be judged by the way we look in there. Um, we're also essentially adding a new map onto the real world, like an exoskeleton onto all the places that we know and love. We are going to be giving ourselves superpowers. We're going to have wings and tails and whatever else we want. And we're going to become smarter, more capable, and we're actually going to live longer. And some of you may die and lose your body and exist continuously in the virtual world as an avatar. So today's mission is to give you guys this contextual perspective, to give you ideas for success and how you can generate all this content that Kyle is saying is lacking, and it's true. And I want to inspire you to uh, save the world. <laughs> That is the underground mission of this conference, is how do we use this technology for good? So this, this mission depends on you guys. So, and we're about to change a lot of the systems in our world. So the systems are going to change, and this is our time to kind of change things up. So I'm going to be giving away a free print in two hours from now if you use these hashtags for a tweet. And this also slide deck is up on SlideShare right now. So this is what I want you guys to remember when you walk out of here today, these th three things. This also changed my life. It changed Kyle's life, too. Why? Because things are exponential. This is different. So how fast is time moving? We know it's ex our industry is exploding. This shows you how fast time is moving. This is four years ago. This headset from Canon cost $125,000. I used to have to bring people out of the future to tell them how fast time was moving, and now you guys see it as soon as you open your emails and you watch your news feeds. This is getting crazy. We know that there is this hype cycle. And we know when we built the internet, there was all these passionate people who were like, this is so cool, we can do so much. The companies came in, the companies left, and the passionate people kept making stuff. That's kind of going to happen here, but it's going to happen a lot faster. So essentially, we're living in a marathon and a sprint at the same time. 
So what's the strategy behind this arc? Peter Diamandis and Ray Kurzweil have been trying to get people to design their businesses on this arc. So they're saying, if drone technology is coming online in two years, your product needs to be ready for that intersection. And that's what you guys have to do. We need to think about what's coming online so we can intersect it as time moves forward because things are moving quickly. These guys are also challenging businesses to affect the lives of a billion people in 10 years, and they're incubating those companies. My friend Jonathan thinks that Elon Musk is from another planet. And he, he's amazing. You know, he's bold, he's courageous, and he's doing radical problem solving, which is what technology is allowing us to do right now. And Jeff Bezos, he's convinced his stockholders to have a long-term view, the seven-year plan, okay? He's disrupted everything from book selling to online sales to delivery. And he's going to take us on a family vacation to outer space. <laughs> so what do we have to do with this? We need to become lifelong learners. We need to become constant learners, which means we have to time bank a part of our day in order to learn all this new technology. A professor I know has her students research new technology and then bring it to the group. That's what we got to do with our companies so that we can stay on top of all these sidecar technologies that are going to intersect with XR. And we need to plan for change. So if these guys are going to give us a headset, they give us telepresence, what do we want to do in there? What do we want to do with it? And let's just take this practical example. You know, we know that the metaverse is going to be kind of empty at first, but we know we want to go in there for birthday parties and family reunions and college reunions. Wouldn't that be fun? You know, we think of, you know, XR is not about XR. AR, the internet is not about the internet, right? And sometimes we forget these background applications are going to be the most exciting. You know, I have to work at, at my home, right? I'm distracted and everything like that. I would rather work in Tahiti or work on top of the New York building and have that be my backdrop. So these backdrop applications would be amazing. And they say that men open up to other people when they're taking a walk. I'd like to take a walk with a mentor once a month and be matched automatically with someone that I really want to connect with or someone that I could mentor myself. So let's move on to the second diagram. This is the one where you've got this top-down model, right? The trickle-down theory is now the trickle-up theory. Just like Kyle said, there's two guys in their garage and they're competing on the same level as a massive company. That's what's happening right now. There is power that the little per people have. I mean, I'm just an artist and I'm using technology that's state of the art and it's free for me to use. So we're experiencing this autonomy trend. We have more democracies than we've ever had in the world. We have organizations that are organizing themselves as flat organizations. Nobody wants a boss anymore. The kids in school want to be taught by each other, not a teacher. Everything is going to be personalized. And I made a list of all the things I love most in the world. Decentralized software and publishing. Couch surfing, Airbnb. You know, Waze asked me yesterday if I wanted to pick someone up, okay? So this technology, we had to be top-down before, but now the technology is doing the heavy list, lifting of organizing ourselves. So now, as little individuals, we have a lot more power. You know, Ethereum is having voting rights in, in their um, monetary system. So the takeaway on this is, look, the people that work in your companies, Give them that 20% leeway to follow their passions, to find their deep niches, and to see what they can do with your products that you never even thought of. You know, Google's 20%, they give them 20% of their week to work on pet projects. That's where Gmail came out with. That's where um, uh, Google News, even AdSense came out from the people on the ground that are coming up with these great ideas. So the users for augmented reality are hidden in the users. They're hidden in you guys. You guys are the users. What do you want to do with it? So Ori last year announced at his opening talk that the biggest AR market is in China. 
we have this unique ability in the U.S. to have people from all over the world here. That's our, like, that's our jackpot card. We've got to figure out how the girl in India that's 14 years old wants what she wants to do with this technology. Because the world isn't going to be... Um, well, there's no more... The man doesn't exist. This concept doesn't exist. It's going to be the little people that have their personalizations that are going to be able to succeed. And we're going to have to make a ton of products, one for every type of person there is. So the last symbol is, you probably can't tell, it's a driving a steering wheel. And that's right. We've got to drive this. These are what I call the four Fs. In a very fast change, you get a lot of fear. I'm a futurist, and sometimes I get caught up in the fear. We can't do that. And we also can't sit in the back seat of the car. We've got to fantasize. We've got to figure out what we want. There's all these incredible videos on the internet. I don't know if you've seen this one, Hyper Reality. This is fear and follow. Where are the user controls in this? Sites, strange beasts, I mean, just incredibly made visions of the future. Well, I realized we needed to start storytelling and sharing our ideas about what we want. And I've, in the last month, I created a hashtag, a community hashtag for all you guys to use, and it's hashtag once upon the future. And the idea is that we write chapters, written, we do podcasts, we do videos, and we're creating episodes to the future. So we create the world as if it was like that, we film it, and then hopefully we get to live that because we've inspired other people to help us make products to do those things. So we also want to make this like, well, we did a hackathon, which was really great, and we also want to make it like the ice bucket challenge. So I'm going to ice bucket challenge Kyle right here on stage, and we're actually going to send magic wands or VR controllers in boxes, mail, and you guys can all do this because this is a shared thing. It's a decentralized thing. We don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be great. So I'm going to send one to Kyle and ask him to submit a story for this, for this archive, that, this brainstorming we're going to collect. So this technology, XR, is basically like giving you guys a magic wand. Expensive things are plentiful. We can be anywhere. We can do anything. Everything is personalized. So now I'm going to give you these three secrets I was talking about to generate content. Personalize the question. My first instinct was like, look on, on, on YouTube, figure out what's happening in the future. But I realized that I generated a ton of ideas just by creating sections. What do I want for me personally? What do I want for my family? What do I want for my job? What do I want for my city? What do I want for my country? What do I want for my world? And what do I want for my species? And if you line up those questions and you start to go down through them, you can figure out different ideas that you have. For example, I want my kitchen window to look out over either outer space on Tuesdays, New York skyscraper on another day, et cetera. You know, my husband, um, <laughs> he's like, I hate exercising. It's so boring. And then he puts on the HTC Vive, and an hour later, he's like sweating. You know what I mean? Like, there's a ton of apps for that that need to be created. I want to be able to show my artwork to people like this. And it just lines up on the wall. You guys can see how big it is, what size it is. You can walk around it, and then I could go, and I put it back in my pocket. Um, I want to collect things like you do in virtual worlds where like, you can collect different items for survival. I want to collect real-life uh, objects like bugs and things like that and have my little collect, virtual collection. I want Spanish subtitles on everything. When I go to the movie, I want to see Spanish subtitles so I can begin to see. I, I learned speaking, and I want to see what the print looks like. I want to have an unplugged vacation. I want to take an Uber ride of the future. Like, how do we inspire the things that we think are important, like cultural understanding? Like, maybe I get into my Uber, I ask the guy where he's from, and he says, oh, I'm from Bombay, India. And I say, oh, cool, do you have any feeds? And he says, sure. And all of a sudden, my boring ride in LA, all the windows get punched out, and I'm in Bombay, and I'm looking out the window around India. And I say, wow, that's a cool market. 
can I go in VR? And he's like, sure. And all of a sudden, the entire cab the car interior goes away, and I'm walking through that Indian market. And when I arrive to my destination 10 minutes later, he says, you want frequent flyer? And I say, yeah. And he gives me the distance between LA and Bombay. I calculate it in. I get free points for the games that I'm playing. And maybe I even get a discount to uh, a restaurant, an Indian restaurant nearby. We can also use our fears to generate ideas of how we can correct things. And it's important to know these dystopian futures, right? Because we want to avoid them. So privacy is a big issue. In my mind, if I'm going to share my information, I want to get it back, whether it's a help app or lo localization. I want that app to tell me, oh, yeah, you spent four hours online today. Or, yeah, everybody that's using the app ate apples, and all of a sudden they have less heart disease. We need that information back. All this research shouldn't be in a university or a company. We should be able to sort through the data as well. World War. I mean, I, I don't even know what's going on in Syria. I, you know, Hillary Coe taught me how to do all these brainstorming. Like, I want to I wanna fishbone the Syria war. Is this the pipeline? What is, what's going on? I want all the information in one virtual reality place where we can go put post-its. The US may be not be grateful. So what if we get catapulted when we want to? We put on the headset, we get catapulted somewhere else in the world for a minute. Um, and the digital divide, I mean, the digital divide works both ways. If we're all isolated in our cities, in our little bubble, we're going to be totally out of touch with the world, and everything we do is not going to, it's going to kind of fail. There's a ton of market breakdowns happening. Um, I do consulting for a company that's trying to revolutionize healthcare. We know that you can give a placebo to someone, and it's almost like a 50 to 30% you know, reaction, because we know our brains have everything to do with our health. We know our nutrition does. But when you go into a doctor, they don't have time to help you change your habits. We need health coaches. But they don't get paid for by the insurance companies, because it's not, I mean, it's all a mess. There is a system breakdown. We know the path to better health, but the system doesn't allow it. Education, you can't teach a kid a fact. He's going to look it up on his phone. We have a systematic market breakdowns across the line. Brick and mortar. You know, the Creative Technology Center is inventing a VR thing where you can basically look at a product. You know, that's the only reason why we shop in the real world, is to actually hold it and see how big it is, right? If you could do that in VR before your product is even made, that would be great, right? Identity. You know. I go by Zenka. Um, I'm a street artist. We use pseudonyms, you know what I mean? So do DJs. But for, for me here, it's like a total nightmare. It's like, what's your last name? I was like, I don't know, Galactic? I don't know, I don't, you know, so you guys are gonna have, you guys are gonna have this problem too when you have avatars and you're in the virtual ro world. My friend Carly in San Francisco, she actually is working to get gender as male, female, and non-binary. Okay, so even our, like the forms we fill out are having a system breakdown. You can't ask someone their age when we're going to be living till we're 200. So all of this stuff is happening, um, and it's a good source for this technology. So let's cut to the action plan. We have very little time left. What we've got right is that we know that this stuff is social. You give a kid a toy, he'll play for an hour. You give him a playmate, he'll play all day, right? It's all about our social interactions in there. We've got the community right. You know, Ori and Cosmos and Victor, they've been bringing us together in California to talk about this stuff. We know it's not just about gaming. What we failed at is we got to remember that this is a marathon. We've got to start thinking about the apps we want for, you know, a little bit down the line. And we've got to package things better. The content has to be packaged more easily to find. And we, maybe we got to have, you know, rentals of this equipment and things like that. We've got to start using this technology, <laughs> demoing it. So I encourage you to um, be optimistic and radical and um, try to visualize this technology before it, it comes. And here's this practical takeaway that I want to leave you guys with today. You know, if Google's giving their employees 20%, what if we dedicated 5% of our week, that'd be two hours, to either thinking, stopping the present, 
The problem is we're, we're in the present on the gerbil wheel, and we have no time to think about the future. And that's, that's not good, okay? So we need to figure, block that time out. Okay, for these two hours, these hour, I'm just going to think about the future. I'm going to learn something new. 10%, maybe we spend experimenting, doing our projects, like figuring this stuff out. And maybe 5%, we help the community do janitorial type things. You know, they say the open source movement is great, but everybody wants to be carpenters and nobody wants to be a janitor. You know what I mean? So there's some part of our companies and our days that we should be dedicating two hours a week. Let's start with two hours a week. That's not that much, but it's going to have a big impact. These are some of the projects that I see us needing to do as a community. And whether it's we put time and money in, you know, digital divide, you know, we got to get this technology out. I, I just taught in the Arapahoe Elementary School, and they taught me more than I taught them, I'm pretty sure. Mind-blowing, you know? They're going to use this technology in different ways that I never even imagined. We need to th free a lot of 3D models, like pay guys to make them so people, everyday people, can start using them. Um, I'm going to try to get Kent by of Voices of VR. He's incredible education, if you haven't heard his thing. I want him to do a lexicon project with me where we start collecting all these terms so we're not confused about mixed reality or whatever it is, and everybody can get on the same page. Maybe taking tweets from you guys to try to define all these things and getting it in one place. We need to translate all the policy. We need to get lawyers to translate policy, um, privacy statements to figure out what those are. You know, there's the guys that made the AR sandbags down in the playground. They freed that. They, they put the instructions out on the internet. 200 verified people, museums, have put that into their museums and increased the people, who've, the, the people who've come to their museum, okay? So if you have a really cool product, share it a little bit. Let it out there. Um, we've got to figure out how to fantasize. Maybe there's, we need a crew connector for passion projects that we're going to get together where we can match up a sound designer with a creator. And um, we need to think about what should be free. I mean, we have libraries free right now in our world. What are those things that have, should be free? You know, in India, they're giving free, I think it's 4 or 5G internet to the entire country for free. One of the billionaires, step forward, he's like, I'm going to do this. Amazing. So, with technology, our superpowers are real, you guys. Um, we've never, common people have never had a chance to save the world before, to change the world. It's always been this top down, it's always been the pharaoh and the king. It's not, not true anymore. So let's reinvent the world system and let's debate the future that we want to have. Thank you for your time. <laughs>